All right, uh, good morning, fellow educator. Um, so apology if my, the title of my presentation today uh, looks a bit different from what was uh, listed in the program sheet. Um, actually, it went through a few rounds of iteration and I don't want to trouble Mr. Gee to update this again. Uh, today I'll be talking about the magic of using Python to automate the marking of uh, coding assignment which is somewhat related to what uh, Mr. Lee has uh, actually briefly mentioned just now about testing also. Um, yep, okay, a little bit of introduction about myself first. Uh, my name is Dean Ang. I am a senior uh, computing teacher in School of Science and Technology, Singapore. Um, and I am implementing a um, computing um, uh, subject in uh, SST and uh, for today's presentation because I'll be using the domain name alongside us uh, so I would uh, if you want to contact me you can just drop an email at dean at uh, alongside dot us and the slides which I'm using now is also available at this uh, uh, URL uh, pycon slides dot alongside dot us okay uh, dot us all right, um, so I spent a bit of time to, to brainstorm some of the things I might want to share um, today. That's why <laughs> the title actually went through a lot of iteration. Okay, should I be sharing on administrative stuff or the pedagogy uh, or even the analytics of uh, running the computing program in SST? Um, so it took me a while before I decided uh, to present it in this format. I am going to do something that is, okay, uh, uh, sounded like it's administrative, but um, the format is going to be a bit different, okay? It's, I'm going to do some live coding, which is a choice which I regretted now, <laughs> okay? Because it's, I didn't know it's so stressful, <laughs> okay? Uh, but since I have already made the decision, uh, so I just have to bite my teeth and go along with it, but uh, the, the thing is that I'm going to drag everyone here along with me. So I want uh, everybody's involvement as well. Okay, so what's going to happen is um, I'm going to give an assignment. So all of you will help me complete this assignment. Okay, so as I uh, live code, you can uh, do a bit of uh, uh, multitasking. So uh, the assignment will be very simple, okay? So you can assess it if you have internet device with a uh, uh, device with internet connection, please go to assignment.alongside.us. Um, it is quite easy. You're gonna just create a function to uh, compute the area of a circle of a given radius. That's it, okay? So I'm sure uh, everyone here will be able to like complete it within uh, uh, few mi uh, one or two minutes with uh, one liner, probably. Okay, but uh, often I will encourage my students to read the question carefully. Okay, so the, the purpose of doing this live coding is that, um, so I'm going to bring a chair here so that I can sit down and code. <laughs> All right, so it's to actually um, um, model the processes, the thinking processes that. Uh, what we want uh, students to go through as they face a problem, no matter how easy it is. Okay, um, so um, like mentioned just now, the distance between your thought and the keyboard is actually very short. And how, uh, but when we translate an idea to a solution, actually there are many things that uh, that's going through, and that. Um, Sometimes our muscle memory is so strong that we automate this so fast and to those uninitiated mind, they probably are not able to see the processes. Because I'm teaching kids of the age of around 15 or so, okay, so I really, uh, you know, as far as possible, try to break down the process for them. Okay, so um, this URL will stay on every of the other slides that I uh, have. So you can just refer to it as I'm doing my live coding. Uh, 
or, or further explanation. Okay, so that's the input and output statement and the prompt statement, which is uh, quite straightforward, but I'm sure uh, we will pay more attention to the uh, requirements and when we're going to reject uh, certain cases. Okay, so like any good um, computing teacher, I will first break down the task for them. Okay, so decomposition is one of the main um, computational thinking concept. Okay, so these are some of the steps I'm going to do in this live coding. I really hope it works and <laughs> uh, we shall see about it. Okay. So step one, I'm going to use uh, the OS uh, library, import OS, to scan uh, an assignment. So if any one of you actually submit the PY file in that form that I had just now, uh, I'll probably upload it into uh, my... I'm going to use Replit, okay, which is an online uh, ID. Okay, so it now allows uh, importing of files. So I will see how many assignments I can uh, collect from here. Then later, I will auto-mark. Okay, so I will use this OS library to scan the directory for assignment and import them. Okay, um, next, um, of course, when we set the assignment, um, we need to have a model answer. Okay, uh, so this model answer will be the function which uh, actually address the problem that I have assigned. Okay, um, before I move on, I just want to uh, have this disclaimer here. By doing what I'm doing here, I'm not actually trying to replace, say, uh, platforms like Cosmology or the student learning, uh, you know, SLS. Okay. Um, what I want to do is to, you know, sometimes uh, if we can automate, we we should automate. Yeah. And um, we do not want to like, you know, uh, go into a platform like Cosmology and start uh, typing and. Uh, at the same time, when I do this, I can also show my students how they should approach a problem. Okay, and not uh, sometimes by breaking down the problem is their learning points other than having uh, the ability to solve the problem itself. The learning process, the framework, the breaking down itself, uh, namely the process, okay, it is important. So this is what I'm trying to achieve, okay. So uh, with that uh, clarified, so let's move on to the remaining steps. Okay, after I've written the model solution, so you really have to think carefully. I mean, what might happen? So while it's a simple assignment, you don't know what students can come up with. Okay, so uh, more often than not, their code, their uh, solution might crash that script that you're trying to write here. Okay, so I'm going to write a function modifier that handles the crashes uh, gracefully. So in case it doesn't work, then you will modify their function and just return, say, a simple text uh, string that says uh, crash. Okay, so this is my step three. And the step four, okay, um, of course, uh, we want to mark the imported script. I'm going to import all their assignment. Hopefully later I can get some submission from uh, the audience here. Okay, so we can test out whether the script is going to work. Okay, I really want to uh, keep my finger crossed that it, it's going to work. Sorry? I, I can't Is it a form? It's a form. Okay. I get this. <laughs> uh, what, what is that? I, so, I click add file, I get a blank pop-up. Okay. Let me just, probably some Google doc, uh, permission. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, telling me. I... I Okay, I, I didn't quite restrict it to my school domain, so <laughs> uh, didn't really work. Uh, but thankfully, I have uh, backups. <laughs> okay, I have already pre-populated some students' solution. Um, let's maybe, uh, because we want to get into action of this, I... Uh, I tested it just now, it was working, but probably there are some domain restrictions in the Google Apps in my school. So maybe, maybe if I have the time and bandwidth later, I, I shall see what I can do. Okay, but we go uh, back to this and... Okay, the last step, which is probably going to be very useful to educator, you want to export that... Um, the result, the scores into a spreadsheet. 
Okay, I'm going to use an open source library known as uh, OpenPyXL. Um, so this allows me to actually uh, import the uh, export, sorry, the, the scores into the um, spreadsheets, which I can name later and save. Okay, so without further ado, let's just dive into the live coding. Okay, you can see my code as I type uh, using this URL, code dot uh, alongside. Uh, us okay, and at the same time, I try to spend one minute or so. You see, hey, I have a submission. Oh, no problem. Uh, actually, maybe it's the internet connection. That that lady there. Um. So, uh, uh, I, we already have one submission. Uh, okay, I think there might be some other limitation that I probably didn't consider, but um, I'm quite glad that I have one. And uh, later on, I can just uh, refresh my Google Drive and you see, uh, yeah, it's here. Okay, so um, let's go into this code dot alongside us and we shall do some coding. Okay, so I have transferred the steps from my slides into here and we are ready to code. Okay, just let me sit down and get comfy. <laughs> All right, so the first step, I'm going to just import OS and um, I need to scan the library of uh, files. Okay, I'm going to use a method known as a list directory. So for f in os.list directory. What this list directory does is that it will list all the files inside a uh, current active directory. Okay, and um, but what I'm getting is a text string of both the file name and the extension. I need to split it so that I can capture the file name. Purpose of doing so is that I want to import this file name into the current file so that I am able to loop through every student's assignment and actually extract their um, answers or their own method okay so i'm going to give two variables one of them is uh, file name f name and f extension and let it equals to uh, i'm going to use a path dot split text okay what this does is to take each file name and split it into their respective file name and extension from there on uh, yeah the, the input will be the uh, file okay so from there on I am only interested in the file name and so if uh, because we have already got a submission here if you look in it, in it the function which I use there is known as area of circle with a camel case uh, format so uh, the file name will also consist of area of circle so I need to filter off some of other um, file. So if area of circle, which is the text, is in that file name. Okay, so uh, I'm going through this uh, cycle so that we can see uh, that we are progressively doing the right thing. So just probably let's print the file name first. And hopefully the internet doesn't see me. Okay, cool. I have already filtered. So only the area uh, file name with .py and you, you can put in other limitation or uh, 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 filtering criterion if you want to. Okay, so now that I have the file name, um, I'm going to put them into a list. Just call them module names. Okay, start with a blank list. So module names dot append file name. Okay, so by doing so, I get a list of all the module names. Okay, from there, uh, I can do an import. But when you import just by text file, it doesn't really work. You have to use, uh, what I'm going to use is a map function okay, in Python. I'm going to map the built-in function of import to my module names. Okay, so let's keep our finger crossed and hopefully the importing is smooth. Okay, um, 
yeah, we're gonna, uh, if there's no error message, means that I've successfully imported that three files. Since I have already got the um, additional answer here by Mr. Oka Kumiyawan, may I know where are you? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to just download this and add your solution to my uh, Replit environment. Okay. Um, Let's show all. I need to give explicit permission for it to keep and show in my library. Find that. Uh, okay. Uh, I also hope some uh, part of the organizing committee can help me keep track of time and that I don't really, really uh, miss that, that uh, schedule. Okay. So, so now that I have it here, okay, it's been my download. I'm just going to upload it here. Okay, there's this function that allows me to uh, drag and drop, I hope. Ah, oh, it's here. Okay. All right, it's uploaded. Okay, let's continue with our coding. So I have step one done and successfully printed. Uh, so maybe I can just for M in my module, print M and see if I have, yep, in, imported all four files successfully. Okay, so let's move on to writing the model solution. Okay, so it's going to be a definition known as, I'll uh, just call it model solution and it's gonna take in a radius uh, uh, the radius but if you read the assignment carefully the radius the requirement of radius is that it's a non negative radius it doesn't make sense to find an area of a circle with radius negative 4 cm or something along that line right okay so uh, you have to also cater for a different data type in case the the students, uh, well, the user actually input some text or some other complex number. I can't really think of how to find the area of a circle with complex radius. Okay, so we're going to try. Handle the case if R is less than zero or that the type of R is not a what I call that, the uh, real number, which are integer and float, I'm going to raise an exception. Okay, else, uh, if there's exception, sorry. If there's exception, I will ask the question or assignment uh, instructed, I need to return invalid else I will just return pi times r times r but uh, so far I have not imported my r so I'm gonna just from math import uh, I mean the pi yeah okay so this should work well let's try it print model solution say 3cm I hope it works. Okay, while well, waiting for it to handle, let's define our next function. Yep, 28. So is that a area of a circle of uh, length 3 units? I think so. 3 times pi times pi, okay, uh, times r times r. Alright, so I'm gonna just write the crash gracefully function to handle it will take in a function and if 
Okay, I will define a helper function inside it. This helper function will take in a radius, and if it crashes, what will happen? We're gonna just throw in invalid. Okay, so we're gonna try fr. Okay, if it crashes, we return uh, crash. Else. We just return F R. Okay, so this will prevent it from crashing. When it crashes, you will just return crashing. So I re return the helper function. This will modify my function. So, okay, if I start to print uh, model solution, uh, or because model solution will prevent the crashing, so uh, now I cannot test that this works. Okay, I think I have very limited time, so I'm going to speed up a little bit, finish up the last two steps, and hopefully it works. Okay, so I'm going to now mark the assignment against test cases. Okay, you can set test cases, which is a list of numbers. I have eight preset one. Okay, we're going to test the radius of uh, integer, a uh, circle of radius, uh, which is an integer value, uh, float value, and a circle of radius, uh, area of a circle of radius zero. Okay, this should return us zero. So far, these are the first two are normal test cases. This is a boundary test cases. So in the process, we also teach students about test casing. And these are the error test cases. If we have negative, negative uh, radius, negative float, negative integer. And what if students really input something like the text string two? We're not going to accept it, right? Okay. So, um, what if they input a value, say, true? Okay, Python will interpret this as 1 and throw you a value, say, pi. So, we don't want that to happen as well. This is an error test case. And because it, our model solution has taken care of the type, so this is not too bad. Uh, this will be rejected and said invalid. And lastly, what if our students enter a complex number. Okay, so uh, these are some of the error test cases that we want to test against. So I have uh, imported the modules just now. For each module, I'm going to keep a score. Call it total. Okay, total we initialize to zero. And we're going to do something here. Okay. First of all, I want to keep track that I'm on the right track. So let's print if our students have diligently put in their names and index, it should print them. Let's see. Oh, our area of circuitry has no attribute names. Oh, it's actually names, sorry. There you go. We have, okay, our participants is now. Um, Mr. Oka didn't really enter the name, I suppose. Yep, we can see that <laughs> no name entered. Okay, so, um, so I have successfully printed the name and the index number. Okay, that would be good. And I'm gonna, can I check how much time do I have left, organizer? Oh, five, minutes. five minutes, okay. I think that's about the time I will need, okay. So I'm gonna print the, um, Name and keep the scores. Okay, so so for each test in test cases, if uh, I'm just use using an F to keep the to modify the module. Okay, so uh, I've imported an M dot area of circle area of circle. Okay, so, so that it will handle crash uh, gracefully. So if f of test is equivalent to my model solution of test, then my scores, my total will plus equals to one. Okay, and we want to keep track of each individual scores also. So I am going to 
put the scores here. Uh, print name for each test, the scores. Before that, let's initialize it. Okay, this will set the score to be 1 and else I will set the score to be 0. Okay, I'm going to just keep it inside a list instead of individually so that later on I can import it. So? Wow, this is getting more and more stressful. <laughs> okay. And my result. Mm, so let's see. Let's print my scores. Okay. So individual scores are kept inside this. So now, ah, you know that uh, Mr. Oka scores already. <laughs> A, a, um, it should be the first one. Okay, so he probably missed out two test cases. Okay, so the final step. Okay, we're gonna export it into Excel. So op I'm gonna import the library, open Excel, and create a workbook. Okay, well, Wubo is a built-in data type inside this. And name uh, active uh, sheets to this. Okay, so I let's create a row header first. Okay, so due to time constraint, I'm going to go to my solution and copy. <laughs> okay, the row header. Okay, this will keep track of um, the name, index, and the scores, individual question, for individual test case, and finally the total. And I'm just going to use the append method to append the row header. So this will add in the row header. And finally, for each row in my results. Okay, where is my results? I have not stored the results. Um, Okay, so just now I have kept the scores. I will actually create a result and keep the scores there. Okay, so I'm going to do it for this. Okay, due to the time constraint, I'm just going to copy some code here. So after I've entered the scores, no need to print it. So my result. It's just, I think this should work. Okay, for rows and result. Okay, I've not done anything here. Last line. Okay, I'm going to append it to my <coughs> row. And lastly, save the workbook. Uh, I've already got tried it earlier on. Let me delete it. So in my file, say maybe I score it, save it as a file name known as scores.excel. Okay, that should be all the code. And you can see that uh, results is not defined. Okay, everything runs. So, hopefully, by downloading this file, you can see that you have your spreadsheet somewhere. Uh, Oh, 
it's not there. Okay. Let's refresh it a little bit. Probably just now I accidentally remove it. Oh no, it didn't save. Thankfully, the <laughs> model answer is there. See if I can di download this file directly. Uh, well, okay. I think uh, due to com time constraint, uh, I'm pretty sure the program will work. It's just running. It takes a little bit of warm up time. Okay, so um, following this, you can actually get uh, spreadsheets of um, individual score with the name index and the total score all lined up in an Excel file and that will help you um, actually do more deeper analysis. So the whole process is time consuming um, but there are things to be learned. So I, I have not really tried with my uh, new batch of students. This is a new content which I've created to to, for this sharing and um, probably I will definitely try it and give feedback in the future to ask whether this is really useful or not. Okay, so uh, that should end the very stressful live coding. <laughs> okay, and I, I'm just going to stop here and uh, probably open uh, the Q&A session. If there's any question, please feel free to go ahead. Yeah. I have one question. Yes. Mm. If you don't have this function, does that affect the, the overall outcome of the problem? Uh, yes, because by importing the module, you are importing students' work. So if students' program crashes the program, then Python got to stop somehow. So No, it won't. Because you import it as a function, uh, as a module. So it is part of like a library that you imported, and if it's not well written, it crashes, it will stop everything. That's why I need the function modifier to actually handle it gracefully so that it can just return a text string and start uh, carry on running for, for other. Yeah, second question, ah. you demonstrate this part on the, on the, on the cloud server. Yes. Is that possible to do this one on the local disk? Definitely. Uh, yeah, so really there's no clear advantage of using it on the cloud. Correct, correct. Okay, so you can do it via Dropbox or Google Drive, download those things and run this locally uh, and your end product will be the Excel file which I think has finished. Let's see if I can download. Yeah. So any other question? Yeah, in the meantime, can you take one, one more quick question? Yeah. So, No one has a question, I'll ask one. Um, okay. Oh, can you actually sure. get your students to create questions using this template? Ken, the but question is like uh, um, run separately. I, I, as you can see, I use a Google form just now to actually uh, disseminate the question. So it doesn't matter what kind of platform. So students can actually create and write in their own. Uh, well, uh, not yet. As I mentioned, this is uh, new. I have actually implemented in one class for, for this circle function and it runs very smoothly and I get analytic very quickly. Really saved me the time of having to read their code uh, individually. Of course, uh, Cosmology can do similar thing, but uh, being a cloud platform, you need to log on, you need to key in, you need to assign, you need to give test cases. So I think um, it would be more straightforward to just open up a text editor and just type. And once you have the first time running, uh, the rest is just changing the function or, or the model solution or the test cases and you're done. Yeah, hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you for your patience. Thank you.